happening now and being able to turn their attention, even sitting at dinner or you're in the middle of talking to somebody and they're taking a phone call. This is part of the incivility that's built into what you're talking about to me. Couldn't agree more. And not that it's my job to give lessons to people, but during the mediation, I'm in control. All mediators are in control of that mediation. Um, not True story, about two weeks ago, I was giving a uh, in-person consultation, people who are considering divorce and considering mediation for that divorce. So I give a free consultation. So I went to them to make it as uh, convenient as possible for them. I went to them. While I was talking to them, the wife, it just happened to be the wife, took a text message. And I actually had to address that. I thought, why am I addressing this with a 40-something-year-old woman who should know better? I said, you know, unless that's your child, I make exceptions for children. But if it's not your child, please put that down. This is important. And to her, she had no idea she was doing something wrong. Exactly. And that's why I'm saying to you, that's a perfect example. And it starts with the kids today, too. We're basically empowering and giving license for all that and building that behavior in and that mindset in because they see the adults do it. I, I agree, particularly with the generation that's uh, younger than myself. I, it really started at that time because uh, although I was raised by grandparents, I'm a traditionalist. Um, it just makes sense, you know, to respect your elders, to respect women, to be civil. You know, don't. I, have you ever drive around and you see people? They're in their cars and they're yelling and flipping people off, and their kid is sitting in the front seat. You know, when did that happen? That people thought that was okay. How that ties into the divorce? They just carry that over into the divorce and their parenting. Uh, many people in a divorce, they're, they're arguing about uh, what they believe is a custody issue. And custody is really the, the schedule or the visitation. Uh, what most people call custody is actually just bad parenting. And I have to define the difference for them. It's not a crime to be a bad parent. If, everyone, if that was a crime, everybody would be in jail. So I have to show them the difference between what's actually uh, harmful or abusive compared to uh, bad parenting. The reason I bring it up is they go after each other on all these uh, issues. They, they, it's like take no prisoners, no quarter, and I have to define the difference for them between what is uh, uh, impolite, bad parenting, or actually uh, illegal injustice. What age can a child determine that they don't want to visit the other parent? The court will consider a kid's opinion. Don't get me wrong. They, they will consider that, but we don't call them, and now I'm speaking in my back east tone, we don't call them kids for nothing. You know, there's no way you or I, if we had, say, a 12-year-old, we're going to let a 12-year-old tell us what to do, particularly during a divorce. The court will weigh it in, but it's only one of many factors, not a high one, because, of course, you have to discern, is the kid uh, being uh, neglected or hurt with the other parent, and they don't know how to tell us, or do they get away with murder with that other parent, and they can't tell us. Uh, so you have to always kind of discern for that. But I don't let, my personal practice is this, to answer you directly, I do not let children into a divorce mediation. That's, that's my personal rule as a mediator. I think that's smart. It, it's, you know, adults, what goes on between a married couple should stay between a married couple. What goes on between adults should stay between adults. Even relatives don't have to know. So certainly there are some things that children that should not be exposed to, but one of them is, you know, what do you think we should do in this divorce? They don't know and I wouldn't ask them. So I, I personally, here's my, if I can give a tip, if anyone remembers anything about this interview about divorce, here's a free tip. Families need to be parent-centered families, not child-centered families. Everything emanates out from the parents. They're the caretakers. If the caretakers don't get care, no one does. So make it parent-centered and the children revolve around you, not the other way. That's my humble opinion. I think that's very wise. Everyone, everyone it works out well that way. As soon as you start to parentify children, you're gone. You're lost. What do you think about in the divorce situation when... There's bad mouthing going on on one side versus the other side. I have seen a lot of people take a neutral position and not bad mouth the other parent, even though they don't like them or they're not with them anymore. Yes, yes. But then the other parent will bad mouth and try to use the child to get information on what's happening with the ex spouse's life. It happens and it's ugly. And the people who do that lack, as I mentioned earlier, emotional intelligence. There are a lot of people, these, I'm not trying to disparage folks, but I see a lot of, uh, not just incivility, but part of that is because they lack emotional maturity these days. It's as if they stop maturing at 16, and I, and I see it all the time. So if someone is uh, acting out, if you will, uh, uh, they have uh, immature approaches to uh, their children, their divorce, um, I, I can only coach, I can't overcome. So I try to coach people past uh, any... Uh, the disabilities they have during the negotiation. 
I, I don't know how to best answer that question, actually. Well, I want to go back to that other question, which is in a state like California, I had heard that if a child turns a certain age and doesn't want to see the other parent, that the courts will listen to that. Again, listen, but not base their decision on that. Okay. It so, depends on the kid's motive and why the other parent or one of them is trotting that kid out. As an example, this is an off example, but to make my point, in the 1980s, the allegation of child abuse during divorce went up by 85%. The allegation went up by 85% during a divorce. It was only proven in court 35% of the time. Just using that statistic, it, you could, you, it could be interpreted a couple of different ways. Uh, either they court missed uh, you know, uh, a large percentage of abuse, or it's used as a, as a, just a simply a way as a tool to beat somebody up as if you would use your know, fist or an ugly word. It's, it can be very, very uh, dangerous. And I have to guard people all the time. And that's not a warning, but to guard them, if you go down that path, it better be happening. If you're just using it to leverage them, I wouldn't do that because uh, the court takes those allegations, child, child abuse, child, you know, the kid's opinion. If they hear anything about the child welfare being uh, neglected, that's when the court really ramps things up. I try to guard people against, are you, is it just a bad parenting issue or is your kid actually in harm? Very interesting. Now, do you do mediation in anything other than divorce? I know that you specialize in divorce, but would you? Yes. In fact, I have. I do, and I, and I, I will. I have a case coming up. I, I can't say specifically that the uh, two employees uh, in the – actually, I, I shouldn't even approach that, but I have two employees. I do employee mediation, but for the past several years, about the past 10 years, it's not – uh, line employees, it's managers. I, I'm brought in because this is a dispute between managers who, using my words, are, are keepers. They, they, they respect both these managers. They're both A-plus on paper, but there's an issue brewing in the work, and it's, it's causing a, a dissension in the workplace. So uh, next week, I'll be doing a case between two managers here in Orange County. Uh, so I do employment ones, and much of that's based on my uh, background as a union executive board officer. Really? What other types of mediation do you do? If you were to look at my uh, bio, you would say, well, he does employment and he does divorce. Those, those are a given. But when you can mediate, it, it sounds like an exaggeration. You can mediate almost anything. Now, of course, the clients, and you, you need to have some expectation of knowledge about that. But you don't need to know everything about everything. So I could actually mediate, uh, you know, homeowner association disputes, real estate disputes, which is what I've done, uh, neighbor disputes. Um, I haven't done any uh, complex litigation yet, but complex litigation has actually taken into mediation too. So I guess my two specialties that I could say that people would say, yeah, John, you're being uh, straight with us. It's employment and um, the domestic. But I've also been qualified to provide units in mediation, continuing education units in mediation to the Department of Real Estate, the Department of Nursing, so I can do disputes within that. Uh, I, I hate to say it, it's everything, but when you can mediate, the only thing you don't know is um, what you're applying it to. Got For it. Example, when two countries are at war, and sadly there's a lot of that going on in the world, well, there's no one person who knows everything about those countries. They just know how to mediate. How do you, as a mediator, get people to agree to mediate? That's actually the first hurdle. So when my phone rings... That person is either curious about mediation or has done some homework and they've made up their mind that mediation is the way to go. So the caller is typically convinced about mediation. My job is to convince them about me. The next hurdle is the other spouse. So you begin to have conversations on the phone with the first caller saying, does he or she know you're filing for divorce? Does he or she know you're seeking out mediators? And uh, oftentimes what you discover is one spouse simply relinquishes the responsibility to do any of the heavy lifting. So someone has to go out there and make calls, you know, research prices of mediators and all this. Um, but even with that, if, they, if the other person finds a mediator, he or she typically just says, okay, you found them, I'll go. Very rarely does someone find the mediator and the other person just summarily dismisses them because they probably figure, well, if you found them, he or she must agree with you so they're already sided with you. That happens very rarely. Most of the time, it's as I explained. Someone has to call. They're already convinced. It's just getting the other person on board with the fact that they're going to get divorced. Mediation is the best way to go, and if I'm their guy. How long does it usually take you to be on the phone with the other person where they have come on board? What is your experience? Just an initial consultation. I haven't met with them yet and all this. 
I would say between the 